hello 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 and welcome to my youtube channel i hope you guys are having a good day out there today my name is ladosha wright the author of curly hair adventures what they don't tell you at the hair salon and the beauty and barber survival plan that's a free ebook that can be found on my patreon page and it's for licensed professionals on how to su survive during difficult times such as wars pandemics and the crises so that's a free ebook welcome to my youtube channel to all of you who are new i am that zany brainy cosmetologist who tells you everything that they don't tell you at the hair salon and today we are having a wonderful 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 discussion about the hairline now the hairline is one of those topics that to me it gets overlooked a lot unless you know it's just the stereotypical um, uh, conversation about you know hair loss so one of the things that they don't tell you at the hair salon is that when it comes to discussing hair care problems we don't really think it's enough to just talk about you know what's so bad or what's so wrong in hair salons we are actually very solution oriented individuals so one of the things that i decided to do with my career is to take those solutions and use them to help you understand your hair care at home so you're not a slave to the hair salon and i've been able to do that through two primary ways so number one i've identified who are the people who wants this information so the four or five people that i have identified who would really benefit from this youtube channel are number one people who are just typically frustrated with their hair like why is my hairline thinning why is it breaking off or where is my length at or why does my color fade so just you know frustrated I can't comb it number two we're talking about people um, who overall they just don't like it like I hate my hair no conversation on that one number three we're talking about people who have been hair shamed you know like why are you so happy when your hair is so nappy and what's wrong with your edges you need to press that out you know why your edges look like that or you know what's wrong? you too old to be having your hair looking like that what's wrong with you so you have hair shaming and then you also have hair discrimination um, why do women wear weaves? I mean, women who wear weaves is this and that. And they don't know your situation. They don't know why you're wearing weaves. Maybe it takes too long to get dressed. Maybe you want to. Maybe you have hair loss problems. Who knows? Discrimination. You didn't get chosen for the date. Perhaps you didn't even get the job. Maybe people just you know look at you funny when you walk into the room your hair you just get discredited they don't hear what you say they're not respecting you all because your hair looks or is styled a certain kind of a way that's discrimination and then last but not least are people who are just authentically in the spirit of I just want to know more about hair so these are the people who I am deliberately you know talking to so if you're new to this channel I hope that you will stay on and keep listening and don't forget to subscribe like and share the information because this all of this content is created uniquely for you now in the spirit of talking about these issues remember I said salons are places that are solution oriented so these chairs aren't just here to make you look good our chairs are here to actually solve or help you understand what you need to do to take care of your hair at home. So with that being said, I've come up with three principles. Very, very easy. Whether you're gonna care for your hair, <clears throat> excuse me, or whether you're going to style your hair, there are only three principles. And those three principles are the right products, the right tools, and the right techniques. So with that, let's just jump right into the topic about the hairline hair. So um, this is gonna be broken up into two uh, videos. So we're gonna talk about the back, which is the nape, and then we're also gonna talk about the front. So in this video, this part, we're gonna talk about the actual front part of the hairline. Then I'll come back, I'll have another model, and then I'll talk about the actual nape, or we call it the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? All right, so here we go. Um, and I have my little notes here to keep me on point. So here's what they don't tell you at the hair salon about the hairline hair. So number one, hairline hair comes in, well actually the hair itself, it actually comes in three stages that starts 
it begins rather when you're like in your mama's belly and so that hair is called lanugo and you guys might call it baby hair and it's really designed to help protect the fetus and actually get through the uh, birth canal come on through the vagina or the stomach i've had vaginal deliveries so let me just tell you that i think that's hell i don't know if that helps have you had babies before did you have vaginal or you have oh yes yeah, so i don't know if that baby hair helps get through because i'm here to tell y'all that was pain was it painful for you? Uh, yes. Yeah. So according to science, though, it's supposed to help make it easier, but I can't imagine what it would be if there was none there. But I'm telling you, uh, if you've never had a child and you're about to deliver, get ready, okay? Sorry to scare you, but it's true, okay? So that's number one, Lanugo. That's the hair that's really there to help protect the fetus and get you get the baby through the uh, uh, birth canal, okay? Number two, you have Vellus. So that's the baby hair that we like to pull out and slick around. Also, you might notice vellus hair for men that are like thinning, or if you just look close in the mirror, you might see these little teeny tiny fibers of hair that are lighter or just thinner. They're also in your nose, your eyelashes. These are called vellus hairs, okay? And then next you have terminal hair. So vellus hair, uh, typically, I'm just gonna kind of show you where it's at. So typically, Vela's hair is going to be the hair that literally comes out into the hair line, okay? Now, some people like to create the Vela's hair and bring some down and just go ahead on and, you know, do the chouchou larue, as Dr. Spritz would call it, and begin to actually style or create a look to frame the hairline. That's not in every culture. But for sure, in the African-American culture, we swear by the baby hair, slay your edges. So it depends on what your culture is. So you can either create that or you actually have the actual Bella's hair. And then next you have terminal hair. This is the hair that we cosmetologists, you know, we focus on a lot when we're styling hair. But we do know that Bella's hair is an integral, very important part of hair styling because after all, without it, sometimes the hair loss can get lost in creativity. And sometimes you can't even get the hairstyle at all if the hairline or the Bella's hair has been severely compromised. All right. So now we have that out the way, all right? Next up, we're gonna talk about, so what happens, how, what are the solutions in caring for the hairline hair? Well, to be honest, it's the exact same solutions that you use when caring for your terminal hair. So first and foremost, and I talk about this all the time in my books and my podcasts, you can just download that. It's on all your podcast platforms. My books are available on Amazon. Amazon as well as L. Wright Books, but I'm always teaching that the most important part of hair care that you can do and we can do as licensed professionals, excuse me, is we must keep this hair clean. Remember, hair care and hair styling about three things, the right products, the right tools, and the right technique. So in the spirit of cleansing, when it comes to the hairline hair, sometimes because we sweat, that hair has a tendency to revert. It might also be stiffer. Sometimes it can be softer because we're thinning. Sometimes it can be softer because it's just been tugged on, and we'll talk about some solutions for that. But what you want to do before you begin to shampoo your hair when it's actually resistant. So resistant, I'm talking about in the nature of trying to comb it or it just feels brittle. Use a nice light leave-in conditioner that has protein to help soften the hair. Now, uh, Vela's hair is a little bit different from terminal hair in as much that there is no medulla. Remember, hair, one strand of hair, each individual strand has three protein layers. If you're a licensed cosmetologist, you know that's your cuticle, your cortex, and your medulla. That medulla is, that, is where that core, that strength is. So there's still, the science of, of it is still being worked on, but they are becoming to understand that it's, it's some coreness in there uh, in the sense of it helps the hair be a little bit stronger. So when you're trying to calm this out to get ready to shampoo it or you're just going to shampoo it and it feels dry, don't just take water to it. Don't start rubbing it. Begin to loosen it up first. So that's your solution. 
Number two, another challenge that we see when it comes to the hairline hair is just overall aggressiveness. Now, I remember my background is in social science as well as cosmetology. So we know that in human behavior, we're just truly, utterly influenced by what people think of us. So for a lot of people with textured hair, we are just constantly trying to get these edges straight, uh, sleeked, or something. And how do we know this to be true? Because there are a plethora of products. You got Freeze It um, by Schwarzkopf. You even have a product called uh, uh, Edges. You can't get any more specific than that. Um, you have another one, Edge Control. Um, you have another one, Jam is a very popular one, The Shine. Jam, and then you have your even salon quality products have them as well. We have Design Essentials, and then they have something called Sleek Edges or Sleek Control. So the edges have two connotations. So some of it is bad. That's your hair shaming, and the discrimination is going to come in that, and also frustration. So what they don't tell you at the hair salon is that the frizzing that you see around the hairline, please understand that 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 is natural. Now I know you're like, oh, but no, because it's gonna be poofy, it's gonna be frizzy. Afro hair is frizzy. It's up to you to embrace it and represent it and wear it well. Even if you look at my hair, um, this could be sleeker, it could be you know, laid down and all this, but it's not because I want to preserve my hairline myself. So mine is definitely on the frizzy side. I'll come up close. So you can see it's really frizzy. So I'm not going to put anything on it to lay it down because I'm going to have to embrace that, you know what, it's my natural hair. Now, when I first clean it, it's, it lays a lot easier. But, you know, I'm human. It's time to wash my hair. So like her hair, it's time to get shampooed. And we can kind of see the frizzes on it, even though I sprayed some product on it. Also, she has her... Um, her regrowth, her hair color is coming back in, and we've been working on her hairline to get it to grow back in because some of the styling, the slang of the edges, the pulling, you know, when you get ready to corn roll the hair, brushing too hard, you know, gels, these all compromise the edges when it's done incorrectly. Remember, we're talking about solutions. So should you not slay your edges or rock your baby hair? It's totally up to you. You know, it's what your culture is when it comes to hairstyling. But for her, I would not promote that a lot because her hairline is already compromised. So if we slay her edges today, as that product starts to wear off, I would encourage her to just let it be because too much, she's going to overwork the hairline. Remember that Vela's hair is not as strong as your terminal hair because it's missing the medulla. That's the third innermost layer. And you need that when it comes to styling hair. Peep, I saw a video on YouTube where the girl was slapping her edges with all this stuff and she made it abundantly clear that she did not care anything what anyone had to say about her edges that's what she wanted to do and she was gonna slap this stuff up there and worry about the consequences later I don't know if I'll take that position however that also is your prerogative if you want to just take the uh, risk and you're 21 and you have a lot of it go for it unfortunately at some point for most people if that is your ritual or your habit or your regimen you will lose the hairline or it will become compromised okay next up when it comes to tools so we have a lot of tools that people use on edges. So we have combs, we have, you know, brushes to help, you know, smooth them. Now remember, you know, you can have the right products. Uh, I mean, the right products, okay? And you could have the right tools. But if you have the wrong technique, you're going to have a problem. So I'm going to show you the proper way that you can slay some edges. So I'm going to use Design Essentials. 
Now, there are some that are stiff. There are some that are, you know, hard. Now, remember, this is for styling purposes only. Don't try to always look like this. The standard of beauty is really unrealistic. So on your first fresh funky do, you get it done, no problem. I wouldn't come back three, four, five, six days later on hair that's not clean and try to re-slay some edges because in a sense, sometimes the, the laying of the edges is sending a message that maybe, you know, the Afro hair is not as cute if you don't, you know, slay your edges. Remember Remember, again, it's what your culture is. Um, like I said, I'll slay them for a little bit, but after that, I'm kind of done with it. I don't really care, but I'm, I'm 54, so at 54, you don't care what anybody think. Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Um, so when you're going to do the product, you're gonna put some on your comb. Now you have to use a lot. Some people like to just actually apply it to the scalp themselves. Uh, however you want to do it, it's up to you, but just understand that what you're using on the scalp, it can, it does clog the mouth of the follicle. So if your hairline is severely compromised, I would just go ahead on and just leave it alone and embrace it. And don't wait for it to grow back in and start slaying them because more than likely you're gonna pull it back out. So that's gonna be like a more self-esteem and confidence issue. Um, but you, if the hair is there, you can go ahead on and do it. Now I have the product there and I'm just gonna come on around. Now what you wanna do is make sure you have the right comb the right brush. Some people like brushes, some people like combs, all right? Whatever your technique is, whatever your tool is, you must have the right technique. So the technique to slaying the edges, please follow your natural growth patterns. That is the biggest mistake that people make. They're trying to create, they bring these pictures in, not a good idea. They're nice for inspiration, but if you're trying to look exactly like that, forget about it, okay? So we're gonna find her natural growth pattern. You're gonna have to come up close in the mirror at home and look at it. Your hairstylist, she should be able to tell. And, and, and so the, the growth pattern, you will know it because when you go to smooth the hair, it will naturally lay with the product on it. If you go against the growth pattern, even when you put the product on it, you will notice the hair will start to slightly lift up. That's when you know you're off your growth pattern. I don't like my part right here. I don't like my, I don't like, I, I, you know, I gotta, I hate bangs. But if your hair, if your dominant growth pattern is forward, then you better cut them. Because if you keep pulling it back, you're going to rip out the hair line. And people are like, oh my God. Yeah, guys, it's just that serious, okay? So follow your growth pattern. Some people's hair uh, grows in so many different ways. It could be forward, it could be a cowlick, which is what she has. So up in here, her hair is growing like in a centrifugal pattern. Then over here, she's got one that's just going straight down. And then she's here. So she has two growth patterns. So here she has your centrifugal, we call it cowlick. Um, uh, and so then here, her hairline is just growing at an angle. All right, that's her dominant growth pattern. So on the centrifugal part, I'm going to actually deliberately follow where the hairs go. So these fibers are gonna come over here and these fibers are coming down, not back, but down. So I must deliberately follow that growth pattern. And then you can take your fingers and hold it and create you know, a wave if you want. You could just come straight back if you want. Uh, follow, again, the growth pattern. Also the shape of the hairline. So we can see she's got a shape here, she's got a shape here, okay? And we're coming down again, and we're going to use our finger to press the edges, all right? So there you have it. No, do not put hairspray on top of this. Now, if you're an actress, you're in a play, you're in a wedding, those special occasions, and you gotta rock it for that movie, for that photo shoot, no problem. But if you're trying to do this as a regular, regimented practice, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna compromise it. So today, she can rock that, all right? 
and then to, when she goes to wrap it, it's gonna come out because this is loose. Now, some of them are stiffer and they're gonna hold tighter, but as it wears out, guys, leave it alone. So you can still wrap your hair with this and the hair will just follow. You can have some manipulation. Now that's Design Essentials. I don't use them all. This is the one that I'm familiar with. So you can, as you can see what's happening, if we wanted to wrap her hair, as you can see, uh, we, she could do that at night. And what's gonna happen as the days go on, this is going to wear out. So that, that product, that's what we call pliable. So that's for people who can live in it. Some people are in certain situations, like I said, photo shoots, weddings, plays, that's not an option. But again, um, in that instance, we understand you got to wash that stuff out or maybe you're just going to wear it and then you, you know take it out a couple of days later please do not try to recreate um these looks once the hairstyle has, has gone okay i mean the edges all right next up we also have heating apparatuses so here's another big mistake i see people make is when they try to use the hairline i mean these flat arms to press the hairline hey guys if you have texture, this is going, never gonna work. It's never gonna work because the textured hair has to be gripped and straightened. This will only, you can grab it and you can get really close, but you won't get the regrowth. And so you're gonna have problems. So do not use these on hairlines that have a lot of texture. So if you're really soft, you know, like a uh, uh, wavy, less afro, you can get away with it. But if you have a lot of texture, meaning curly, coily, wavy, a lot of density, and you have the frizz, then I'm telling you right now, it's, it's not gonna work. What will work is a straightening comb. The reason being because a straightening comb, we can grip the hair and press it with the back of the comb, okay? I'll show you again. A pressing comb, you can grip the textured hair come in with the back of the comb and press. Now, you have to know how to use the pressing comb. If not, you can cause what, you know, what they call traction alopecia, which comes from too much tugging, burning, this type of stuff. So if you don't know how to use your straightening comb, leave it alone, and, and if they don't want their hairline pressed out, leave them alone. I don't press my hairline out. Like I said, I'm not that cute. When you're over 50, you don't care. But I do understand, well, I don't care. But um, I do understand that some people, you know, they're like, no, uh -uh, I can't, uh -uh, you got to press this down. So it's up to you. But if they have a lot of texture, you must use a straightening comb, not the electric one, because the teeth are too wide. These teeth are close enough. You see that? Close enough to grip the texture, to separate the fibers, and you're gonna use the back of the comb to press. But you have to make sure you are gripping the hair and press. Now that's some skills, and you gotta be able to see really good, so put your glasses on, your readers, or it's gonna burn your client's hair out. All right, now next up, we also want you to understand what are some solutions? What are some solutions when the hairline really has been compromised? Well, number one, you can use your hair growth pomades. These are the most popular, uh, the most affordable, and they really do have some success provided you use the right techniques to go along with them and the tools. Remember, you have to have all three. Don't buy the stuff, don't use it. Don't buy the stuff and use it incorrectly. You see what I'm saying? You know, you have to follow the manufacturers or your cosmetologist slash barbers, you know, natural hairstylist perfect, uh, instructions. So this one here is by Nature's Blessing. Things. And then we have my absolute favorite, which is DECA Plus. They're both pretty good. One is heavier, one is lighter. So what they're using, they're using essential oils that's going to go to the bulb and nourish the papilla where the hair is at before it becomes hair. So let me get you a little visual here. Woo, here I am. So when you apply the pomade to the scalp, What's going to happen is you apply the pomade, right? 
and then the ingredients is gonna go into the bowl and that's where it gets nourished and then the hair is formed. Also, when you massage the scalp by applying it, you're moving the blood to the bulb and that's going to nourish it as well. The blood is cool because it has like your white cell bloods. Those are what helps take that terminal hair and turn it, I mean vellus hair, and turn it into terminal hair if you're thinning. Also, it definitely helps nourish it. You know, it helps keep this hair strong. So this is why you cannot be waiting two and three weeks to cleanse the scalp. So shampoo is the most popular way, but watch my other videos to learn the alternative ways to clean the scalp and the hairline, all right? So we have that. Next up, you could, you could very well take supplements. So take supplements that are for your hair, skin, and nails. But remember now, we cannot play doctor over your head. So if you want to do that, please ask your nutritionist, your doctor, if you're in relatively good health, you can go for it. But if you're not depleted of that mineral, you may not notice any difference when you take a supplement. So you will need medical attention, advice, or whatever words you want to use to help guide you through that. Um, also, you have Rogaine, that's the, uh, the, the uh, store-bought name. The science name or the medical name is Minoxidil. That has been scientifically proven to grow back bald spots. You have to be bald to use the Rogaine. A lot of women come in with the uh, Rogaine and they have as much hairline as her. I don't know a dermatologist who's really, you know, recommending that, but I'm not a dermatologist. Most customers who I work with that use the Rogaine, um, they truly are bald, okay? So um, she has a little bit too much hair, so that has not been recommended for her. Sometimes they can do cortisone shots. People are like, oh my God, are you serious? It depends, you know, on what that could be. It could be alopecia. Um, there are a lot of reasons why the doctor may prescribe, you know, the shot or the Rogaine or, you know, whatever. So let the doctor guide you through that. It is over the counter right now so but don't play doctor guys let the dermatologist walk you through that also you have a laser the little red lights you can put the hat on and that's going to rush the blood to the surface I don't know about that. When we had a lot of customers who did laser therapy, they bought the cap, they noticed zero um, improvement on the hair. Go figure, I don't know. Um, next up, you have PRP, and that's your platelet-rich plasma, which goes back to what? Blood. So you can pay for this stuff, and the doctor, there are some severe cases where you are going to need that. But remember, only a doctor, well, y'all already know a doctor is the only person who can do that, okay? But again, the science is to get that white blood cells, uh, you know, the white blood cells that's in the blood to the actual papilla. So that's going to be more direct as opposed to massaging. We got to massage and let the blood come up. The platelet injection, they're going to actually put it in there, okay? Uh, next up, you, uh, I think that's it. So I covered everything. So there you have it. Those are your multitude of ways that you can get that hair to grow back. My favorite way to me is just to keep it clean and you're going to, you know, open up the mouth of the follicle so the hair can actually come through. That's the biggest problem because culturally a lot of us have been given the wrong information. So we're putting all this stuff on and we're like, I paid 75, 100, 250 and I want it to last, you know, for two weeks. No, don't do that. You can use essential oils. Just watch my videos to find out how you can clean the mouth of the follicle. So you may not necessarily have to put soap and water, but you have got to keep the mouth of the follicle clean and that's going to help. All right, and I, let me see what my notes are again. Um, and then last but not least, you know, just pay attention to your growth patterns, you know. Get up in that mirror and look close, you know. So I'll use myself. So you can look at my hairline and see how that's coming down. You see that? And, and when I comb my hair, you can see the growth pattern. It lays. But let's say I want to pull it back. You see what happened? It wants to come forward. So I don't want to rip my hair. I used to do that. 
and you can see what happened. My mom said, stop doing that. You're going to snatch your hair out. But I wanted to be cute. That's when I was like 17. We caught up with me now, okay? So that's why I said that that 17 year old girl was like, I don't care what she's. I said the same thing and now I'm like, ooh, ooh. So be careful. Don't do that, okay? So I'm blessed. I still have my hairline now, but you got to understand I'm at that age where menopause is going to come in. All that's going to affect the hair. Why? Because hormones. Hormones are the only thing that's scientifically proven to grow that hair back. And so what we can't do is that we can't control our hormones. There's nothing we can do about it. The doctor will give you things when you have hormonal issues that's causing the hairline to come out. But if you're doing things like excessive tugging, pulling, slaying ledges, four, five, seven days, you know, in a row, so you cannot do it. Please don't do it. Once you slay the edges, it's over. It's okay. The frizz is a beautiful sign. And it's your it's your job when people start to try to shame you like, girl, what's wrong with your hair now? It's all frizzy, it's nappy, it's buzzy, it's beady bee. Uh, I have afro hair. What, you got a problem with that? I mean, put it back on them, you know, or just walk away. If you don't have the courage to just say anything, just, you know, silence is really good because sometimes people need to hear themselves. Like, what are you saying? If you're looking at my hairline, my kid's hairline. Remember when Beyonce's daughter, everybody was, I can't believe she got that baby walking around with her hair all frizzy and fun. It, it's afro hair. What was she supposed to do? Oh, I forgot. Put all the bubbles on it and weigh it down. Listen, that's from the 70s. It's the twin, It's the new millennium. G little girls don't wear bubbles. You have a grandbaby? How old is she? Six. Six. Does she like bubbles in her hair? Okay. No. That, that's old school. That's from the 70s. You know, the 80s. These new kids, they're like, I don't put that in my The kids don't like that. Twist me up. Put a couple of, you know, ponytails, a few French braids. They're done. They're done. They're over it already. And you know what? Nobody has time for that. Braid the child's hair up. Braid your hair up. Or just let it be like me. I don't care. Be like, oh, that's easy for you to say because you got good hair. There's that hair shaming. You're, don't accept that. You know, no. It, it looks good from back here. You know, everything looks good on camera. But if you come up and see me in real life, you'll be like, yeah, your hair looks like a, ra a rabbit's booty. But that's okay because I got rabbit's booty hair. I'm African. And so not all Africans' hair frizz, but I'm from the part or I have the genetic pool that says my afro is going to frizz, her afro is going to frizz, so we have to embrace the afro. So there you have it. Um, that's my lesson on hairline education about what they don't tell you at the hair salon. All the information of how you can buy my books and hair care products will be in the feed. And at the end of the day, remember, hair care and hair styling are only about three things. The right products, who cares whose name is on it, how much it costs, as long as it's the right product. The right tools. Understand your tools are important. Don't scrimp on a good comb, okay? Just go ahead on and pay the money for it or steal your customer. That's what I steal hers all the time, okay? No, don't steal those. That ain't nice, okay? Um, right tools. And then number three, right technique. Watch the videos again. Pinch the screen. Zoom open. Go to other people's, you know, sites. Check out Mr. Greg Gilmore. Um, you can also go to You Got Curls, uh, Miss Melanie Higgins Day. She has a wonderful website and an Instagram page. These are people who really, really care about hair. Donella Scout Therapy. She's on Instagram. There are so many wonderful people in the beauty industry who truly, truly care about hair. My colleagues. Um, Leah, Amber, they have Poppy's Girl over at Instagram. So there are some wonderful people. Dr. Spritz, he's on Instagram at Platinum Hands. Um, Sir Poo, you know, he's on Instagram. Follow all of these wonderful stylists to learn some wonderful things that you can do to your hair and see, even if they don't have videos, watch their work to see what they're doing so you can understand there are truly a lot of hairstylists and barbers who truly care. Thank you so much. And again, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, check out my podcast and my blogs and all that cool stuff. You know what I said when I'm always signing out, right? A whole lot of peace, a whole lot of love, and a whole lot of hair. And if you ain't got no hair, don't want no hair, I can't stand hair. I ain't never. Don't worry about it. Just put up your beautiful, beautiful ball head. And I'll put the video up with her finished look in case y'all want to see. I'll just put it at the end of this video. Bye.